Hello, this is part 10 of First Snow. Uh, last time, we were talking to Eileen about uh, how we want to go with her to see her family or something like that. Uh, close enough, probably. Ow. On to semester's end. <clears throat> Classroom lies silent. Safe, uh, safe for the scratching of the pencil against paper. I've already finished my math test. The unwillingness uh, to be the first to uh, turn in being the only thing keeping me glued to my desk. I'm thankful for a ch for the chance to rest, though. Eileen's pace as we scooter around the zoo took all my effort to keep up with. And then there was the other business we got up to. Someone friendly brings his paper to the front. Other students following suit uh, soon after. I quickly join them, eagerly placing my test on the desk uh, and packing my things afterwards. The final, uh, the last final of the semester now over, I'm ready to go home and to see Eileen one last time before she leaves for Colorado. Hey! Oh god. The loud voice uh, from behind me makes me jump and startle him. Hey! Oh, Capriche. Uh, Capricia, hey. My heart slowly moves out of- Jeez. My heart slowly moves out of my throat with Capricia and I starting off uh, together towards our club. I'd considered asking Eileen if we could walk back to her apartment together instead, but I couldn't leave without saying my goodbyes to Capricia and Wallace if I could find them. What brings you guys to class? Uh, it's my class anyway. Uh... Or you, I guess. She probably didn't say guys. Uh, Millie wasn't around, so I got lonely. Oh, great. So I'm the second choice, huh? Well, at least I can be around for her. <laughs> you two really are close, aren't you? <laughs> yep, we grew up together. Now we even uh, live together. Millie and me and Haley. Uh, she's our other friend. We take uh, good care of each other. There really are all kinds of relationships. It's so different from high school, where everyone was neatly organized into friends, classmates, or strangers. We all just lived with our parents. Do you have a roommate? What are they like? I live with my fam- uh, with a family friend. She's nice. Even if she looks a bit rough, I have uh, the apartment to myself a lot, though. The statement seems to give Caprice, uh, Caprice, uh, food for thought. Mm. You shouldn't look so tired. School's finally over for a year. Yeah! That's why we're having an extra special art club meeting. Uh huh? Extra special? You'll see what I mean. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I have a feeling she's working this out as she goes along. I still can't decide if I like that spontaneous of hers, and it's endearing, but there's no sense of stability to her like Eileen has. As we head towards the art, uh, art building, we spot Eileen just outside, busy huffing into her hands and rubbing them together for a little warmth. It takes a moment for her to notice us. Eileen! Eileen, hi. As she looks up in my direction, I notice her shoulders relax a little. It wasn't uh, long ago that I only ever saw Eileen tense and on guard, but now she's reflectively, uh, she reflective, reflexively relaxes when I'm when around me. It's nice. <sighs> Holy crap! For her part, Capricia just. Uh, Bows on ahead without a care in the world. Hey! 
I lean Tentus right back up as soon as she sees my companion. The uh, the moment lost. Yeah, I figured that was gonna happen. Still, I'm left rather happy at the effect I have on Eileen, whether she notices it or not. Afternoon. Uh, afternoon, you too. Grisha, why are you lo looking at me like that? It's creeping me out. Grisha grabs on onto both our shoulders, and to my surprise, directs us away from the arts building. Fun! We've had a change of plans. Do I get a say in this? Once again, Capricia do either doesn't hear or chooses to ignore the quest. Clearly the second option. Why? 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 No, seriously, why? You can't just have... A this is my house! You can't just do that. Duh. I don't know if I'm just extra pissed off because I'm tired or what, but that annoys the heck out of me, bro. By the time we arrive at my apartment and uh, shirk our coats, it's already dark enough to flick the lights on as we enter. Apart from the sound of passing cars, the only sounds are Capriccio's exaggerated sounds of thoughtful inspection. Eileen raises an eyebrow as Capricia whips out her phone to take a photo for that word. The item disappearing into her uh, pants pocket always as quickly as it appeared. <sighs> Will you just leave that thing? You've been fiddling with your phone on the way here more than Allison does. Hmm. Hey. Hmm. Well, it's true. Risha gives a thumbs up, but it has the opposite effect, if anything. Her agreement is a little too quick, given how stubborn Capricia usually is. Oh, God. I know what's happening, because I've seen the art for this moment. So. so Rose isn't here, then? She just drifts in and out. Uh, I've given up, up trying to work out uh, any schedule to it. Cool! Cool posters. They're my roommates. She's been living here uh, longer than me, so the decorations are all hers. <clears throat> I knock on the. Oh, f bro, Capricia definitely called Million Wallace. I bet. Is there anybody else she might have called to? I don't think Rose, since she wouldn't have her number. Yeah, she definitely called them though. Knock on the door rings out. Four light taps struck with metronome's timing. Come in. Door's unlocked. You this is my house! Huh? huh? What's going on? This is my apartment, you know. Exactly. Capricia just grins, drawing a grimace from Eileen. What do you think I was on my phone for? I called some friends over. Called over some friends. Yeah, Millie and uh, Wallace, probably. The old, old door creaks open with Millie's head peering into the living room. Assured that she's come to the right place, she skips uh, in with the unmistakable figure of Wallace following her like a giant shadow. Millie! <sighs> Millie, have you heard from Haley? Millie answers as she takes off her coat while is doing the same uh, for a scarf. Hello there. She's at home sleeping. She uh, seems like Final has tired her out. Come on. She never wants to go anywhere. Uh, I don't know if it's Haley, but I feel like I can relate. <laughs> it's not just about Finals or going particular places. Being around people is exhausting in itself. Exactly. Lately, I've been looking forward to it, though, even if it takes a lot out of me. I can't relate to that. The clanking of bottles draws my attention. Looking downward, showing a six-pack of uh, bottled beer 
and carried in one hand, and a plastic bag with a couple of brightly colored nacho uh, packets visible inside. Bridget looks up to the two, surprised just as uh, I am by the pres- uh, present they've brought along. <laughs> just a little uh, something for the special event. I can't believe you didn't take the Santa hat they were offering, though. Not happening. <laughs> I'm not wearing a Santa hat, Christmas or not. Why not? It would have suited you. <sighs> Don't get started. This was Capricious' plan. A party to celebrate the end of college for the year. I really would have preferred uh, her to just tell me. Yeah, really. But there's always a begrudging respect that she apparently managed to organize. All this during the short uh, trip from college to my apartment. I'm about to warn Wallace and Millie, casting Cotus eyes on his beer. Oh, about Millie, uh, casting Cotus eyes on his beer, when Eileen leans over and murmurs in my ear. Allison, is a party here going to be a problem for you? Sure. It'll be fine, I think. Satisfied with my answer, she steps over to the couch and takes a seat with a sigh. Despite my waving off the concern, I appre- appreciate Eileen's sense of responsibility. <laughs> As we talk, Wallace sets down the beer and chips on the table. Capricia just wastes uh, no time scooting over and ripping open the bag, really soon following and taking a seat across from her. Self-voicing, self-voicing disabled. That was an accident. Uh, the fact she steals one of the beer bottles doesn't go unnoticed. Millie. <laughs> Wallace. Just, just the one. It won't hurt, right? That's a whole bottle. <laughs> hey! Hey, stop hogging the chips. Yeah, this was a bad idea. But I'm hungry. <laughs> Dang, Millie just, just takes everything, bro. Wallace just sighs, defeated as the two bicker over the food. I feel a little sorry for him, but given he did bring them, make yourselves at home. Eileen gestures for me to join her, jerking her head. Giving up any thought that I could control them, I skip over and take a seat on the cushion next to her. As Eileen turns toward the television, she finds a beer bottle held in front of her face. Looking up to the smiling Wallace, offering it, she takes it in her hand. Merry Christmas, Eileen. Cheers. Same to you. Two clink their bottles together, popping the lids with a bottle opener on Wallace's keychain before Eileen slouches back into the couch. While the thought passes my mind that uh, the last thing I'd want is an al- alcohol-fueled mess at my place. Those fears are put to rest as the two gently sip away. They're just friends sharing a drink, not partygoers uh, looking to get drunk as they can. <clears throat> looking around the room, uh, the sure is a low key, uh, low key for a college party. Just friends drinking and gossiping. Uh, it's nice. Uh, far from the wild craziness I expected when I heard tales about college when growing up, guess I fell in with the right crowd. What are you doing? Hang out with uh, us losers anyway, Millie. Writing club not doing anything special? No, not really. They're doing this and that, but most of them uh, seem to have plans. The leader and his friends are graduating, so that it's going to be up to me to keep the ship sailing. Sounds like you're going to have your hands full next semester then. Always up for a challenge. <clears throat> oh, great. Hey, Wallace. 
Risha's excited tone that as she wolfs down her mouthful, a uh, mouthful of nachos, nachos to enthuse. Enthuse him? Remember what we talked about at the pizza place? I mean, about your club and all? No. But? No. No. <laughs> Billy grins triumphantly at her friend's expense. I feel a little sorry for Wallace being caught in this in their rivalry. <sighs> oh crap, Rose is back. I'm the only one who notices the creak of the door. My attention wholly uh, focused on it as I wonder who's arrived. Part of me worries that Capricia organized for more people to come. The girl now bickering with Milne. As the leather clad uh, woman steps in, everyone in the room suddenly drops into a dead silence as they stare back at her, the woman being just as dumbstruck. Hey. Sup? So, I struggle to stifle a chuckle, never ha having seen Rose act so awkwardly before. <laughs> everyone, this is my roommate, Rose. Uh, Rose, these are my friends from college. A clarification has the intended effect, everyone relaxing as soon as the words are said. Sure, some wild party, party you got going on in here. Oh yeah. Oh, actually. I'm left wondering what she's uh, doing as she clicks her fingers and uh, dives back for my coat. After a few minutes uh, fishing, minutes? After a few minutes fishing about, she manages to pluck out my phone. After holding it uh, to me to enter the unlock code, Rose stands back in the corner of the room and holds it uh, up with both hands. Oh, she's gonna take a picture of it. Just gonna take a quick uh, photo, photo for the folks. Smile, guys. Yeah, I've seen the, all of these arts. Uh, Capricia and Millie need no further prompting leaning towards each other as Capricia flashes a V and gives a uh, holy toothy grin. Alright, thumbnail. I simply lean towards Eileen as she does the same. As we do, I idly note that this will be our first photo together. brings the camera steady. I can't stop myself from smiling. I spent so long stressing about it, uh, being away from my family, but before I knew it, I found myself surrounded by a new one. We might be a bit, uh, we might all be a bit odd, but we get along. I find someone to hold, hold dear and uh, who cares for me. We're all in this together, celebra celebrating life in my little slice of, of the city. I finally made a life that I can call my own. Thank you, everyone. Rose, Capricia, Wallace, even Millie. Oh, yes, that is a good one. That's right, that's a good one. And especially Eileen. And that's the end. A world apart. I like that. That looks good. Okay. That's the end of the chapter, so uh, we are starting Act 3 now. Uh, but I'm going to end that there. Uh, have a nice one. <laughs>